Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. I want to thank all of my subscribers today for helping me reach my 300th video. I appreciate each and every one of you and if you're not subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button. A web-based application dashboard is very helpful in providing links to all of your self-hosted tools. And I've used Heimdall for many years to organize and provide readily available links to all of my applications. I think that one of the most important features of a web-based dashboard is that it provides a GUI to configure all of your links as opposed to having to edit individual YAML or comp files. Today, I want to introduce you to LabDash, which is a new open source dashboard for your home lab. LabDash is easy to configure and even provides widgets for weather, date and time, and system monitoring. Here we are in the home page for my self-hosted release of Heimdall. And Heimdall is a pretty simple application in that it provides icons for each of your self-hosted applications, which are simply links to their web addresses. And then we have the option over here to rearrange the order of those icons. And we also have the ability to go down and define additional applications by specifying their name, the URL, and then we can go back and edit them. And we can also change the colors and the text associated with them as well. Next up, we have the GitHub page for LabDash, which is the application that I want to discuss here. LabDash has about 15 minor releases over the course of slightly over a week. And so it was released in around the beginning of April of 2025. If we scroll down here, we have a basic picture of what a LabDash dashboard looks like. And then further down, it says that LabDash features a customizable grid layout where you can add various widgets, links to your tools and services, system information, service health checks, custom widgets, and more. And I gather by what I've seen here with the applications so far is that they tend to expand it much more. And it's very simply configured with a Docker Compose file, which we'll get into here in a moment. My lab dash web menu is pretty simple here. I have a widget for the weather and I have a widget for the date and time. And then I have various uh, desktop widgets for each of my available applications. And you'll notice in the lower right hand corner that they have an icon, which in my case is green for every app. And it means that that particular application is up and running. There is also a customizable search bar in the top line of your lab dash dashboard. And for example, here I can go ahead and type in Scottabyte um, website and it will go ahead and bring up my Scottabyte website. So we have um, basically it opens another tab and it goes ahead and displays that. You can also type in a search for example we could type in scottabyte youtube and that will go ahead and bring up a search um, and in this particular case i'm using my search xng um, and it's going ahead and returning those search values here and listing the returns in another tab of my web browser heading back to my lab dash web page you can go up here to the hamburger menu in the upper right hand corner and we can choose the option for login. And so now I'll go ahead and log into my lab dash instance. And once I'm logged in, it will provide me the same icons that you saw before. But now if I go up to the hamburger menu, I have the option to edit the dashboard. When I go into edit the dashboard, I end up with these options here um, that allow me to go off and edit a particular entry. So for example, I'll go edit my Bitwarden entry here and it says it's an app. The name of it is Bitwarden 
It gives the URL for my Bitwarden instance, and then it goes ahead and asks me to select an icon for it. So we'll look at that a little bit more deeply here in just a moment. The other thing that this allows you to do is you can move the icons around and change the order of them just by doing a drag and drop. Now that we're logged in, if you look in the upper right hand corner, in addition to the hamburger menu, we also have a plus sign. If you click the plus sign, it gives you an option to add a new item to your menu. And the choices of items that we have are widget, app, blank app, blank widget, and blank row. The blank app, blank widget, and blank row are simply spacers to allow you to space out your applications. If we select widget, we have a choice of the date and time widget that you see above here, the weather widget, which you also see, and then a system monitor widget. If I click add and add a system monitor widget, it will list the CPU utilization of the system. It will also list the current temperature of the CPU and the RAM utilization, as well as the disk utilization. In my case, this isn't too meaningful. And the reason for that is because I have my lab dash running inside of an Incas container. So I'll go ahead and click on the hamburger menu on the icon and delete that system menu or system widget. If we go back up to the upper right hand corner and hit the plus sign once again, this time we'll go ahead and add an application icon. And for the application shortcut name, we're going to make that Cloudflare. And then for the URL, we'll go ahead and make that HTTPS colon slash slash cloudflare.com. And then the application icon selection field, we'll go ahead and start typing Cloudflare. There's a pretty good application library out here. And if they don't have the application icon you're looking for, you can go ahead and download one from the net, or you can go ahead and design your own. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the checkbox show name and show name will show the shortcut name on the icon as well. I'll go ahead and click add and here you see a Cloudflare icon down here at the bottom. Now if I scroll up just a tad bit, I can go ahead and click done and come out of editing mode and you notice now that all the icons no longer have the hamburger menu on them. And so I can go ahead and click the Cloudflare icon that will go ahead and open another web tab and go to the Cloudflare website. I'll head on back to my lab dash web page and over here we can go back to the hamburger menu and click edit dashboard once again. I'll head on down to the hamburger menu for the Cloudflare icon and go ahead and select delete and it deletes that application. The other place that we want to take a look at is if we go up to the hamburger menu and we choose the option for settings, you'll notice that we have a custom tile for the name of your dashboard. In this case, I called mine Scottabyte Home Lab. You can enable search, which turns on the search bar at the top. And you can see that my search provider is custom. My search provider is not Google. And in fact, this isn't correct. My search provider is actually my custom installation of Seer XNG, which I've covered on the channel before. If we head down to the appearance icon, we can have a background wallpaper for the application, which I have not chosen. And if we go down to the backup option, you have an option to export your current configuration where you can import it to another configuration. Which brings me to a point, apparently there is also a LabDash application for Android and a LabDash application for iOS as well. When you're finished editing the configuration for LabDash, you can go up here and click on the icon in the upper left hand corner and that will go back to the menu. And at this point, 
Let's go off and see how to install LabDash on your system. Here we are in one of my Incas servers and I'm going to go ahead and create an Incas container for the installation of LabDash. I'll do that with the Incas launch images colon Ubuntu forward slash 2404. I'm calling the application LabDash or the name of the container LabDash. I'm giving it the default profile and also the bridge profile that I've discussed in Incas containers step by step. I'm setting boot.autostart equals to true, and I'm setting security.nesting equal to true because my intention is to install the LabDash application nested inside the Incas container as a Docker application. So I'm going to do an Incas shell over to LabDash, and the first thing I want to do is an apt update just to make sure that all the container repositories are completely up to date. Next, I'm going to install some of the dependencies, which are going to be nano curl open SSH server and net dash tools. Since lab dash is a Docker application, I'm going to install Docker from the script on the Docker website using the curl command. Now that Docker's installed, I'm going to go ahead and add myself a user account with an add user Scott. I'll give Scott a password and then we'll go ahead and put Scott into the pseudo group and we'll also add Scott into the Docker group so that I don't have to use sudo to submit Docker commands. Let's su over to the Scott account with an su space dash space Scott and then let's go ahead and do a make dir on lab dash. And once we have a labdash folder, we'll go ahead and do a CD into the labdash folder. Labdash uses a JSON web token for encryption. And so we're going to go ahead and do an SSL or an open SSL RAND-Base6432. And that will go ahead and generate a JSON web token for encrypting the username and or rather encrypting the password, I should say, of the LabDash application. Let's go ahead and do a nano on compose.yml and then paste in the contents of the Docker Compose file. The Docker Compose file is pretty simple. The first thing we want to do is we want to move down to this environment variable called secret and we'll go ahead and delete your secret key. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste in my encrypted token that I just created before we got into editing the file. The other important thing to point out here in this particular Docker Compose file is that it normally operates on port 2022, which is the internal web port. And I went ahead and exposed that to port 80 since we have a dedicated Docker system running inside of our Incas container and all ports are available to us. Next, we have a um, volume for the slash sys location, and that is a read-only access to it. And then we also have a Docker sock file, and that is also a uh, dedicated connection to the container. And then we have a config folder and also an uploads folder. And those are going to be our two non-volatile folders for the application. Once we have made an update to our JWT token, we'll go ahead and do a control O and enter to write the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor. To download the container overlays and start the application, we simply do a docker space compose space up dash D. Now that the application is running, you can do a docker space PS and you should see that it is up and running and you can see here that it is. Let's see what address this is running on by simply doing an if config. And the if config command will say that the ETH0 device, which is what you're looking for in my case, 
is running at 192.168.1.198 and your address will vary. Now if you head back to your web browser and enter that address and hit enter, it should go ahead and say welcome to LabDash. I go ahead and click next and it says LabDash features a customizable grid layout where you can add various widgets. And I click next again and it gives you a little bit more information. I click next again and again it tells you your data remains private because it is loaded on your local server. And finally one more next and it asks for the username. I'll go ahead and type in Scott. I'll type in a password and then I'll go ahead and confirm that password and I'll say create account and continue. And now it comes up and says created account successfully. And once it does that, I can click on OK. So what we have here by default is going to be the weather widget, the clock widget, and then the system uh, status widget. In this particular case, the status widget doesn't mean a lot in regards to the disk space in particular because it's trying to look at an Incas container which is how I decided to implement this. If I go up here to the drop down menu and I say edit dashboard, it has a whole bunch of empty entries in here which you can certainly edit and add to, or you can hit the plus sign up here to um, deal with some others and go ahead and enter those as well. But in this case, since I don't really want the dashboard here, I can click the I for information and it is calling out the system that the Incas container is running on. But I can go up here and click the three dot hamburger menu and say delete that system widget. When I say delete, that goes ahead and goes away. And now from here on, you can go ahead and configure LabDash for your custom self-hosted applications. LabDash looks like a great alternative to Heimdall, which can be configured completely from the GUI. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel, and don't forget to hit your notification bell, and we'll see you next time.